I recently got this Laguna F1 table saw because my rigid table saw took a poop. And it comes wired with a 110 or 120 or whatever you want to call it. Regular household wiring plug. I have 220 in the shop. My rigid was on a 220 and this one is convertible. So I got a conversion kit. It took a few weeks for that to come in and now it's here. And so I'm going to go ahead and put it in. I'm going to show you how. It's not too terribly tough. If you're familiar with any kind of electrical stuff, it's pretty easy. I'm going to move through this pretty quickly because I want to get back to work on customer projects and so forth. But if I'm moving too fast, you can always pause it and rewind and watch again. Or if there's parts I'm talking about that you're not interested, go ahead and skip over them and get to the part that you need. This is a small shop, so the saw is on a rolling cart so I can move it where I need it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this repositioned so that you can see better and I can work better. You're going to want to get comfortable. So, so if you got a rolling stool or a low chair, or God forbid knee pads, you don't need a bunch of tools, just a screwdriver and a pliers of some sort. Obviously the first thing you want to do is make sure that it's unplugged. But then we're just going to remove this cover with these four screws. And there's a washer on each, or four bolts, I should say. Machine screws, bolts, whatever you want to call them. You can see I've been using it. It's a good idea to raise the blade all the way up so that you have access to this electrical box here. All right, there's a screw that I can't see right down here. If you've got stubby tools, that might be helpful too. It's kind of a tight spot. Just a little bit of a screw with no washer. But don't lose it in your sawdust. And then on the back side of the wiring box cover, you've got your wiring diagram. So you don't even need the instructions necessarily that come with the conversion kit, but you've got that too. So whichever one you want to follow. So right now we've got the whites nutted together and the yellow, black, and red are nutted together. And then of course you got the green ground that goes anchors to machine. Oh, here's the gasket for that. Don't lose that. Try to keep it clean. This dust will interfere with it, making a good seal. We'll get that out of the way. Kind of nice. They provided an extra cap in case you didn't have that. I'm going to go ahead and take this electrical tape off because we're going to be making different connections and some of this is coming out of here. And we gotta take this end cap off here so that I can slide the old start stop box out of there. You can leave it dangle if you want, but I'm gonna take it all the way out just so it doesn't get damaged. And you'll need a box end wrench for these bolts just to loosen them so it can slide out. These are probably metric, but a 3 8 will work in a pinch. a ton of slack on my strain relief here but just enough to get it out. We'll take this strain relief off. It's in two pieces probably and we'll reuse that for the next one. You might need a pliers to pull this out but mine came out on its own. And it just opens up like that and fits around the cord and snaps together. So set that aside. There's another strain relief in here. There's a like a zip tie attached to this little knob here in the back. So I'll have to loosen that. There we go. I'm just doing this by looking at my phone screen on selfie mode. There, cut that loose. And now. Here's 
another look at it. Just came out from there. Hold on to your screws, don't lose those. Set that aside for later. This is probably a good time to vacuum out some of the sawdust that's been collecting in here a little bit. Now here's another strain relief that might just wiggle out of there. Or you might need to grab it with a pliers or a channel locks. Careful not to break it, it's plastic. But if you do happen to break it, it's replaceable. You can find them wherever you've got wiring stuff. It's doing a good job securing the wires. Can you tell I don't work with these a lot? There's probably an easier way, but I'm kind of struggling here. Okay, I finally did get it out of there. I just had to get a different angle on it. So I used my channel locks and just kind of grabbed it and wiggled at it and then it came loose. My green wire is still connected so I had to loosen that screw. It's really hard to get a good camera angle to get low enough so that you can see the screw but just trust me there's a little screw up here that I need to get on my knees to get to so I can see it. Kind of got to just do this by feel. You gotta get it really low to get to see it. Dude. Okay, I think I've got it. There. Jeepers. Uh oh, there's a washer too. <laughs> Great. So, uh, yeah. Tiny little grounding screw and a washer somewhere. Good thing I vacuumed. That would be harder to find. And now the grounding wire is free. And you can see that's got a loop on it that that screw will go through. So now the cord is loose and I can pull it all the way out. Just pull it on the side here. And now here's the new power cord and switch. So here's the pigtail. that will take power to the motor. And we'll just Thread that through that same hole. Give yourself plenty of slack to work with. And we'll slide these back in that hole, make our connections, and we'll put the strain relief back on. We'll start with that tricky green grounding wire. My gosh, that was hard to get to. So I ended up just removing the whole box um, with, there's three other screws that go here from the underside, just so that I could get that green wire in the hole. It's just a stubby little machine screw that holds it in. So now I can slip the wires back in. There's a gasket here that goes between the motor and the junction box. Just a rubber gasket. And the wires slide through that main hole. And then we'll put these screws back in. All right, now we can make our other connections. The ground is securely attached to the motor housing. So we're we'll separate everything. And we got a lot of extra cable in here. It just made it easier to get the green going. You don't really need that much sheathing inside the box, but you want a little bit. So we'll start with the easy one. We're gonna do white to white. Just pull that extra off and twist that up a bit so that it's more like one wire. Do a little pre-twist and then screw the merrill nut on. You don't necessarily have to pre-twist, but if you do, go you know clockwise so that it twists together i think i went backwards but whatever we're gonna put tape on that but i'm gonna wait until i get the other nuts on so white to white and then the black that came in on the cable with this other white one that's gonna go to power the new one of course will go to the motors red one so black to red white to white 
black to red. It's going to twist this way. Nut it. Did you say that when you were playing tag or something? Nut it. And then the only two left are the black and the white that go to the motor and those will get married together. You want these nice and secure and also you want to keep the dust away from the bare metal if at all possible. You don't want dust inside this box so that's why there's gasket above it, there's gasket below it. We're going to tape everything. Combustibles and electricity do not mix well. Give that a couple few wraps. And some people will just tug it and break it, but I, I like a clean end on my tape. So I keep the scissors in my electrical kit. pretty dust free. We'll tape up the rest and put this back together. Now before I put the cover on I'm going to put this strain relief on so I can work on either side of this hole. So this just kind of pops over the cable and then snaps together. I tell you this is challenging working around a light and a camera and in small spaces. Is kind of tricky but anyway if you can get this to squeeze together there's a, a flat spot above and below and the hole that it goes in has flat spots too it's not a round circle more like a flattened oval so you know it'll push into that and it'll it'll put up a fight it should go should go in easier than it came out but I don't do this a lot so you're just watching me struggle a bit. Oh my gosh, this is impossible with the camera. I gotta move it. Now we're gonna secure the cable to the motor housing in this hole with this little clip. And it just slides around the cable and it's got a hole for the screw to go. There's no washer with this one, but it's got kind of that pleated, I don't know what you call that, it's kind of grippy. And this is a short little stubby thing too. I guess you don't want a lot of extra machine screw poking into the motor. So this cable needs to be able to move some and have a little bit of slack because the motor is going to go up and down. So that should keep it nice and secure to the motor. And we'll just feed a little more down the back side to go through this zip tie in the back here again. Before I secure this cable on the back side of the cabinet here, I want to make sure that I've got enough room to reach to get these mounting bolts into that T-track. This is the hardware that came with the other switch. There's a square nut and a washer and a machine screw or a bolt. I'll just get those square nuts on and get that in, slid in there. There is a top and a bottom to these square nuts. There's more of a flat side that goes toward the, where it's going to pinch. And it's kind of beveled on the top here. And I'll snug it up just finger tight. Not even super tight. I want to be able to slide it around a little bit so I can position where I want it. But now that it's in there, now I can secure that zip tie thing. Now I'm going to take the channel locks again and just squish this down and then push it in. Give it a little wiggle. Coming in. Yeah, 
think so. Yeah, now it's doing its job. And then I can put this end cap back on. And it still slides freely. Now I can put this junction cover back on. Don't forget the gasket. Just give the wires a little fold and tuck them up in there. Should be plenty of space. The box has a little hook on this end and then a hole for the screw on this end. In the project I'm currently working on, which is some picture frames for canvas art, I've been cutting down some reclaimed white oak that's got some really nice weathered color. It's tough stuff and it's not always straight when I'm running it through the saw. There's sometimes some bends and warps and stuff. And sometimes the internal tension will put a bind on the blade and, and I'll be honest, the reset button kept popping off. I was trying to go slow, but also trying not to burn. Several times the saw quit spinning in the middle of a cut. So I'm hoping that the 220 will make it more powerful and it won't bog down quite as easily. But also I was using a full curve ripping blade and it was pretty dirty. So that I'm sure didn't help. So now I've, I've cleaned that blade, I put it back on, and now I've got some almost two inch thick. This is also white oak, but it's not quite as weathered. This is a tree from my yard that I cut down in 2020, so about almost five years ago. So I'm gonna run this through. It should give me some pretty similar resistance. Well, I hope this video was helpful to somebody. If you got value out of it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, do that. If you know somebody who would want to see this video, they just got a Laguna and they want to rewire it, share it with them. And maybe even hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this or future projects. All that stuff goes a long way to help my channel, so I appreciate the support. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Now go make some sawdust.